Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to look at a game that was on Kickstarter a little while ago called The Breach. This is a new game from Ludus Magnus Studios. It is a one to four player game that takes roughly one to two hours to play, and is a competitive game. Or if you have the expansion, it'll be a fully cooperative game as well. So in the game itself, you are going to be playing breachers, and you're trying to breach this network that you're going to try to gain information from. And each player is going to have a secret objective card that they're trying to gain the different information sequences on that, and be the first player to do so. The first player that is able to achieve that will be the winner of the game. Now, this is not going to just go on easily, as you're going to see in this video. There is going to be a enemy on this, the ice, that are trying to defend this network, and they're going to be moving around, bringing out different bots and seekers and finally the guardian of this network that is trying to eliminate the breachers so that they cannot get this information. And if the guardian is able to lock down the network and remove the gates before the players are able to get the information, then all the players are going to be eliminated from the network and they are going to all lose the game. So you're also, you're not only fighting against other players, but you're also fighting against the game itself that is trying to stop you from achieving your goals. So in this video, I'm going to be playing through the game, showing you the first, middle, and end few turns to show you how the game plays and progresses to help you decide on whether or not this is one you want to pick up. Now, like I said, this is going to, or it has been on Kickstarter and was successfully funded, and now they are accepting late pledges. I don't know how long the late pledges will be open, but I'll have a link down in the description below if it's something you're still interested in. If you were on the fence on this one, or you are just finding out about this one, there is going to be an option. If you want to snag this, you can do so in the description below. So, as always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, also hit that notification bell and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff. Now, I do want to point out that all the materials here, as beautiful as they are, are still prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better than the final production copy of the game. Also, before getting into the game, this again is a competitive game, but I am only one player, so I am going to be playing both of the different adversaries or avatars at, together so that you can see how everything works. So some of the cards I will have face up so that you can kind of see what that player has. Normally, these are all going to be kept hidden and each player is not going to know what the other player is either working towards and will, uh, what other options that player has in their hands. As a lot of these things will be kept hidden from the other players, but I just want you to be aware of that. So as you're watching, you can kind of keep that in mind that I'm doing this so that you can see what's going on and not that this is how you should be playing the game. Let me know what other kind of coverage you want around this one as well. If there's other videos you want to see, I'll hopefully be able to do some additional coverage of this one once the production is done with that. Let me know if you want a teaching video or other videos around this game as it gets through production and what your thoughts are. So let's go ahead and head to the table and we'll see how this one plays. All right, so moving into the game, we're ready to get started here. So the game itself is going to be played over an undefined number of rounds. Each round is going to be broken down into a number of phases that are going to be handled. First off, you're going to start with the players moving into the breacher's turn. This is going to start with the player that has the first player token and proceed in a clockwise manner where each player gets to take a breacher turn. During a breacher turn, this is going to have two phases to it. First, you're going to have the action phase where the player is going to get to perform a number of actions based on the number of clicks that they have and each player is going to start the game with two clicks. Once the player has completed their action phase, then they'll move into the net phase. During this phase, they're going to get to do some configurations, again, based on the number of configurations they have, where each player is going to start the game with one. Finally, then you're going to move into, once all the players have had their turn, then you're going to move into the firewall turn, where you're going to resolve a password, where you're going to pass the first player token, and then you move into the firewall phase, where the players are going to handle enemies, or determine what's going to happen with that. And then you're going to wash, rinse, and repeat and continue doing this until either one of the game players has met the conditions of their card that'll win them the game. Or if the, the, the big bad is going to be able to shut down the network by closing off all the gates. All right, so let's move into the game itself. So first off, Strum's going to start us off as he is the first player. So he's going to have to choose an entrance point for one of the gates. So he'll start off one of these different areas here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start him off up here. And with a blacked out area, if he starts in there, then we're going to reveal that as part of that particular action. So he doesn't have to pay the cost of this first one. 
So when he re when you reveal a new tile, you get to position it any way you want to. But I have two entrance or exit points here, so I think I want to line these up so that I can move around with the uh, into these different areas. So from there, then it is going to move into his turn where he's going to get to do actions, and he has two actions he can perform as he has clicks or two clicks that he can use as actions. So I think the first one I'm going to do is move, as there's not much I can do at that particular location at this moment. And so let's go ahead and show his card real quick. This is his objective card, and these are going to be keep, kept secret from the other players so nobody knows what you're going after. But I'm playing by myself, so of course I know all of the cards already. So with his card, he is looking for a full green, a full blue, and a yellow. So right now there's a full yellow out, so he just needs a half of that. And then over on the ends, there are the greens and the blues, but that's going to be tricky. So our players are going to have to meet each other and attack each other to try to steal information from the other players or the other avatars that are out there, as these are going to be hard to meet all on their own. So as the this objective right now, I could start by working on that space there, so maybe that's a good plan. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and start with our first action. Instead of being a move, we're going to try to infect. So we're going to try to infect this space so that we can place a virus on there. So in order to do that, we have to roll the infection die and figure out what's going to happen with it. All right, so our infection die, we did infect. And then we also are going to raise our threat. So we are going to add one threat to our area. And then we also are going to infect. So I'm going to go ahead and place an infection token on that space. And then that is resolved. So that is our first action. Then the second action, I'm going to go ahead and do a move action. So in order to do this, I'm first going to calculate the number of moving points that I have. So I have four moving points now as each of the cubes of that color is worth two. Then I'm going to move one of them to another box. And then I get to carry out my movement action by spending those movement points. I can use those to trigger different effects on there. So I could spend one movement point to drop my threat, uh, cooling that back down and reducing that. So I might do that before I, can t I finish moving. Eh, let's go ahead and do it. I think I'll have enough movement points to handle anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and handle that. And then I'm going to go ahead and move. So let's go ahead and say that I want to move over here. So it's going to cost me one movement point ready. And then I'll reveal this tile. And then I get to rotate it any fashion that I want to. And there's only one entrance to this one. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and do it this way so that I can move into there. And there's no additional cost for that. So I'm going to go ahead and move into here at this point. And this one also has the same effect. So there's no point in doing anything else with that. So the rest of my movement points at this point, I've used two out of the four and there's no other point and there's no other area to go into so i cannot do that so i think at this point i'm going to go ahead and end my movement there and that will finish off my second action so now that i finished that then i am going to move into the net phase so i'm going to get to handle a number of configurations each configuration lets me do one of two things i can either choose to push two cubes or a cube twice or i can choose to draw a card from my stack. So I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a push and I'm gonna push this one back and back up here. So following those arrows so that I can get that movement point back. All right, so that is going to finish off my turn as there's nothing else at this point I can do. And I cannot choose to remove my infection tokens to gain information yet because I don't have enough. I need two of them surrounding a half information block or all four if I want to have a may, the, the full block. All right, so that is going to end Strum's turn. So we're going to move over to, to Myla to take her turn. So with her, she is going to go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at what she's after. So she's after a yellow, the full purple, and a full green. So with her, I think I'm going to go ahead and start up here. So again, I'm going to go ahead and start off by flipping that over. And this one is, so it's got two entrance points. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that there. And then she is also going to, well, I might as well try to infect with her as well. So we got, we were successful with that. So she does infect. And then we are also going to have to move this up one space, which will trigger a worm to be deployed. And worms have hook. 
So when they're deployed, they're going to be attached to the character in there. And what that means is that uh, it's going to hook its target. And then if there are three uh, worms surrounding your targets, then you cannot place up a screen or have a screen effect on there. All right, so that was my first action. So my second action, now I have a couple of choices. I could attack the worm and start trying to get that off, but at this point I only have two points to its one defense. So I could eliminate it with that. Um, but I think I'm gonna hold out there with that. And instead I think I will I think we're going to upgrade. So in order to upgrade, I'm going to choose one of my upgrade slots and remove a cube from it and move it down into one of my cheat slots. And then I get to take the benefits of that and, and uh, resolve any costs along with that as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do this one here and move that down. Let's go ahead and do it on... I'm going to do it on this one. And then I have to pay the cost. So first off, I have to push a yellow. So the yellow is going to be pushed here. And then I get to gain a red that'll be added to the red box right away. All right, so those are my two actions. And so that will end that part of my turn. So then again, I'm going to do a configuration. And I think I'll gain a card with her. All right, so I have, and again, these are going to be kept in your hand as well. So this one is harnessing space. It can be used at any time. And then it's going to be resolved. So with this one, I have I must have opened a breach and then place your uh, avatar in any room adjacent to a breach or, or an avatar. I believe is that with is that symbol. Double check. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Interesting. So from there, now we're ready to move on to the password phase or turn. So the password is going to be passed to the next player in clockwise order. And then finally, the firewall turn. So during this turn, each player is going to draw a card from the database and resolve the card. So let's see what we got here. So this is going to, I'm going to handle it for this player first, and then I'll handle it for that player. So starting with this player over here, we have an Echoes card or a Spy card. So this one is going to resolve based on all the echoes that are out there, you would resolve it for one of those. And then you have to resolve the effects of that card as well. So this one, whew, this is a nasty one. This is gonna move this, the uh, seekers up three spaces. So one, two, three, that's gonna drop two seekers on there. And they're gonna go onto the space of that player that's handling the thing. And you're also gonna move this one forward one, which is going to increase the, the uh, overall threat or uh, Thing by one so now it's a two so it's gonna make everybody a little harder to deal with so that was a bad card to start the game with i'm going to place that over there and then the other player is going to handle his card and this one is for this is crushing so this is a worm card all right so this one is going to have our worms move uh, right now the worm cannot move that way i could have him move down if i wanted to though so I think I'll do that. And then he would attack, but he can't, there's nobody to attack there. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and advance this by one, and that is going to drop another worm. So this one's going to drop right back on top of me with another worm attached. All right, so then it is back into my turn now. And so what do I wanna do here? I, I definitely want to try to move but it might not be a bad idea to kind of get rid of that worm that's on me as well. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and attack. So in order to do this, again, I'm gonna calculate my total attack power right now is four. I'm gonna move one forward, one space. Their defense is two, so I'm going to double that value. And so that's going to deal three damage to that guy, or the worm, and the worms only have two, they can only take two infection ratings, or two infection tokens, so I would have dealt three. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that guy, and that is my first action. My second action, I will go ahead and do a move action for that. So my move is going to be two, three points, and I'm going to go ahead and move down. So first off, that's one, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip over and reveal this one. And again, I'm going to have to line it up. Well, let's go ahead and do that there. That's a cost of zero. All right, and I will move into there. 
I don't know if they attach when anybody moves in, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume no. And then so that was just one movement point to move into there. And I think I'm good there. So at this point, if I end my space in this space, I can choose to push a cube and resolve. Or I have to, if I resolve one of these, which is either an upgrade or a configure, then I get to push a cube for that. All right, so that is going to end my action phase. So I'm into the net phase. So again, I have to do a configure, which again is either to gain a card or push two. So I think I'm going to go ahead and push this time. So I'm going to push this yellow here, and I think I will push the red down. And then part of that move, I do also have to push the yellow as well. Uh, I forgot to do that from before. So that was my two pushes. And I did resolve a configure, but I don't know if that handles during the network phase. So I'm just going to go ahead and err on the side of caution and say no. All right. So that is going to be the end of my phase. So I'm back over to the other player to go who has some nasty enemies in there with him. So at this point... I am going to, I will attack. I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of one of these. So I'm going to do an attack of four against their two defense. So that is going to, again, double. That gives me a three infection on her. I have to move this down one. And so she can only take three. So she is going to be eliminated. And then I do gain a, a reward token for that. And those can be spent to gain rewards. So this isn't a complete waste of my time. And that was my first action. My second action, I could attack again, but at this point, then I'm only going to equal it. So I'm only going to deal one infection token. So I got to find a way to increase that. And... And then they have abilities as well. So they have antivirus. So the infect action is blocked in a room with echo. So that's the other reason why I'm trying to eliminate her. And then if I choose to leave the room, then, then they also have a retaliation where they will add a infection onto me. So it's not a good thing to be in rooms with them or to try to, to move around. So, so I can't infect. I could do an upgrade just to try to, to build up a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one here. And I think I will place it down here. So this one's gonna give me a red token, which again will be added to my area. So hopefully I'll be able to handle her next turn. And that'll finish off that, as that's my two actions. So then I'm going to do my reconfiguration. Um, I wanna go ahead and take a card this time. Maybe I'll get something good. And I have brutality on your turn. It's a tactics I gain and attack plus two until the end of your turn. So that's cool. All right, uh, that is going to be it. So then again, we are into the firewall phase. So this will transfer over and then the then we'll handle the cards. So first off with, my, with Maya first, she has charm. So this one is going to affect the echo that's out. So I'm going to target an opponent within range of two uh, move one room closer. Uh, target avatar within two moves one room closer. Eh, I don't know if I want to handle that. And then this one allows her to attack. And it is going to have her attack within range one of that. But her attack right now is only two. He does have defense. So I'm going to just pass on both of those. I don't have to choose to resolve either one of those. And then finally, I have to move. And these are all going to move. This is not good at all. All right. So it's going to move one forward here. That's going to drop one in here. So that will that definitely will connect to me. Move this one forward one. And finally, this one forward one. Now, this is going to have the Guardian come out. So this is going to have a sequence that happens. So first off, when the firewall wall reaches A, you're going to deploy this guy and replace the room with uh, which it is deployed in with the alpha room. So I got to pull that. All right, so this is going to change out. So I'll just place that over on the side there. And then again, this one can be positioned any which way. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it like that. And these go back in. 
and then he comes out. All right, uh, and then all infections found on the replaced room are placed on the Guardian description card after flipping this card, which there once wasn't any infection tokens there. And then you're gonna turn this card over and place it on the firewall board on its space. So now we have our Guardian out and he cannot be defeated. So he's just gonna, you, we basically have to run from him. And then we're also going to shuffle in his cards with our the other enemy cards. So let me do that real quick. All right, and then he also has, his card has some abilities. So infections assigns or viruses assigns to him as if they were in the alpha room. So anytime we try to infect the room, it's basically gonna just be put on him. And then when the marker moves to B, then we're gonna flip this card over and it's gonna have some additional effects. Okay, so that was really, really bad. Okay. On to Stern, uh, Strum there. He is going to have another, so we have another charm. So this one is target avatar within two. So I believe she is within two. Moves one room closer. So I'll go ahead and shift her up one. Uh, yeah, I could move her that way. Well, maybe move her there. Okay, and then This one would have us attack within range one. She's got plenty of defense, so there's no point there. And then there's no effect to handle at the bottom there. Okay, so I think at this point, now we're ready to move back into the player's turns. I'm gonna go ahead and handle a couple turns off camera, and we'll be back a little bit later to see how our players are doing. All right, so moving back in after a couple of rounds, our players are having a rough go of things. While well, one player was able to pick up some information where the other player is still working on it and the Guardian has been wrecking things. We had three cards come up right in a row and each one of the Guardian cards at the bottom of the card has you resolve another card. So it just kind of chained together and things are getting ugly and we're almost ready to flip this over where the Guardian's going to start working its way around the board trying to destroy the gates. So our players have definitely got to pick up the pace here. All right, so moving back over to Maya to go, she is going to start her turn. Again, she has her two actions at this point, and her cubes are definitely not in good positions, so there's definitely going to be some, some problems here with that. So I think I'm just going to do an upgrade as my first action, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and place that here so that I can do a move action. That gives me a blue so it's going to drop in there, and I've had to spend a lot of that, and I've, I'm down to one virus, one more virus, and I'm going to be booted from the network, and that's going to cause me some, some headaches as well. And then as my last action, I, I can't move because I don't have any yellow cubes in there at this point. And I think I'm going to have to just do a configure to start trying to manipulate some of this. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to configure. Let's me do a push of two cubes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That is the end of my actions. So then during my configure step, I get to do something again. I'm obviously going to do two additional pushes. I'm going to push one there and one there. All right. Uh, that is the end of my turn. So now it's going to kick over to the other player. So, so Sturm here over here is going to go. And with that player, he's going to go ahead and attack first. And their threat, their firewall threat has gone way up. So his attack value right now is five to its defensive four. So he is beating it, but not by a whole bunch. So he's going to go ahead and play Brutality. And this is going to add plus two to all of his attacks until the end of his turn. Now, unfortunately, the other player is going to be like, no, nope, we don't want you doing that. So she's going to play Buzz. And this is an anytime card. And it's going to trigger when a tactics card is played. So this is going to cancel the effect of a tactics card played by another player. So she'll go ahead and discard that. And he's going to have to discard his card with no effect. All right. So that was super unhelpful <laughs> on that part. So five damage. This is going to move down onto her. So that's going to deal two damage. He is going to go ahead and play strategic attack, though. So this is when attack. This is going to add an additional virus to that. So it's going to still do three damage to her or three viruses to her. So that will eliminate her and that'll get him a reward token. Now he has three. So he's going to go ahead and cash these in. 
and gain this reward here. So this one lets him gain a partial and a card. So he's gonna go ahead and draw a card. This one is Vigor and it can be used anytime. It's gonna add plus two to my attack or plus two to my defense. So that's cool. And then I have to choose my, the piece of information I want. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a green. So I'm gonna take a half of a green, place that in there, and that will finish that off. So this just gets placed over my area, but that way then other players cannot get those. And then these will be returned to the supply. All right, so that was my first action was the attack. And then do I need, I do not need purple. So there's no point in infecting there. So at this point, I think I'm gonna spend this cheat to open up a breach. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a breach card on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a move action. This is going to slide over. I can move up to three. So that'll let me move down here. That'll reveal this car or this tile here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it like that. Do I want to no. turn it like that? I think. Yeah, that'll work. All right, that'll cover that up. This is just removed then because I can't use that anymore. And then I have two research tokens there. I have one movement point left, so I can go ahead and grab one of those. So this one lets me take a card if I want to when I spend it. All right, uh, that was my second action. So third action, I'm gonna go ahead and try to infect again. And I was unsuccessful. I get a, to either configure or I can upgrade. Um, well, let's go ahead and upgrade. So I'll take that and I'll do the move one. So with that one, that's a black cube. So that means I, it's a wild. I can choose any cube that I want to. And I'm going to go ahead and take another attack cube. I think at this, well, I don't have a lot of defense. Maybe maybe a defense might be on the smarter end of things at this point. All right, uh, so that was unsuccessful. So I attacked, I moved, and then I tried to infect. So those are my three actions. And so then it'll go into my configure step. Now I get two configures now, so that I, now that I've bumped this up a little bit, so I can do... Uh, the two different options twice if I want to. So first off, let's go ahead and do a push. So let's me push two cube up to two cubes twice. So that was that one. And let's do it again. So I'll do that and then that one. Okay, so those are my the two configures. So that will finish off my turn. So then this is going to be passed. And then it'll move into the enemy part, the firewall step. So this player's drawing first. We have a charm. There aren't any of the echoes out at this point. So then we'll just resolve the bottom effect. So it's gonna have all three of these things move in one space. So that one moves one, no effect. This one moves one is gonna drop another worm in here that it's going to hook onto me. And then finally, this one will move over and this is going to be flipped now as that is step B. So it's going to still have distortion. So uh, virus is assigned to him as if they were in the Omega room. And then the devourer, you're going to rub, run the subroutines as follows. So you're going to move to the nearest gate when it starts or ends its movement in a room with a gate, the, the, uh, this guy is going to remove the gate. And then he attacks up to one space away at plus one. So things are not looking good for our characters. I think the firewall might, <laughs> the, the, vir the, the defense systems might prevail. All right, so then we're over to my other player over here. So then we have the worms. Um, swim into the ground, so move even if not linked. So I'll go ahead and move him over there. And then it's going to cause a red cube to be pushed. And so that'll be pushed down there. 
Uh, well, these are optional. So don't want to do that. And then we're going to do, and then that's going to move all three again. <laughs> oh no. All right, so another worm's coming down. Then this one moves over. And this one moves over, which is going to increase the firewall again. So we're up to five. Oh boy, our enemies are getting powerful. Okay, that will end that turn. So now we're back over to the player's turns. And so I might want to try to eliminate him or try to. I'm at four right now. Not going to have enough. I'll do one virus to him, but not enough for two. Hmm. Well, I could use the card, though. I could have Vigor. That would let me add two to that. That would get me up to six. So it would do two, and that would eliminate him. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and play that and attack. So that'll move a cube down. That'll eliminate him. There aren't any rewards for defeating bots. So that's all I got there. That was my first action. My second action, I'm going to go ahead and try to infect again. And I got it this time and advanced this by one, which drops one of these echo chicks in there. And then I'm still looking for blue and green. Still got some stuff to do here. So I might want to try to, well, I can't, if I move away with her, she's going to drop a virus on me. So I might want to just do a configure at this point and try to rearrange things. All right. And I think I forgot to flip this over because I moved through. So I'm going to go ahead and handle that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a configure. Let's me push. So I'm going to push one there. Yeah, I'm going to push them all up there. All right. Uh, that is it for that. So now we're into the network phase. So I am going to discard these two viruses. That lets me gain this. So now that gives me a full one of those. So my player is doing very well with that. And then for the configure part of it, lets me do, so I'm gonna go ahead and move those two for my first one. And I think for my second, I'll just do it again. That way then I have all of my stuff in lined up and I can drop this at any time. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. So just discard that up there to draw a card. So this one gives me vigor, vigor again. So that's good. And I think that'll be it. So from here, then it moves over to my other player who has been struggling quite a bit. She's got a bunch of enemies in her space. And I might as well try to do an, in, well, I have an infect there. I really need to move. I could do a move action. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a move. That gives me four spaces. So I'll do that. I still don't know if these guys follow or not, so. And then, I have one point of movement left. There's not much else I can do with that. Well, I could move all the way up there. So I think I'll do that. Start working my way somewhere else. All right, uh, that was my first action. Second action. Well, maybe I should stay in here. Second action, I might want to upgrade. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll upgrade. And I'll add that there. That lets me have a black. So I'm going to take another attack. So that seems to be needed at this point. I will go ahead and spend this right away to remove a virus. So that'll be taken off. Those are my two actions, and then I have a configure. So I'm gonna move a yellow down and a red over. 
and that is everything I can do. So that will end the turn. This is going to be passed. And then starting with this player here, we're going to draw. And it's another nasty guy. So now his subroutines have to be handled. And he's trying to move towards the nearest gate. And again, it's that player's choice. So you're going to go ahead and stick him in here with her. And then threat is going to increase all avatars within one. So her threat's one now. And then it's going to remove a virus from each player. Or if he's got any on him, then it's going to remove him. But... He doesn't, and then he has to again draw another card. And it's another one, so he's got Crush. So this one's gonna have him move two spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up here. And then it, since he ended his turn in a, in a room with a gate, the gate has been removed. And then he is going to attack. It's a plus four, attacks all the avatars in the room. There is not an avatar in that room, so that is that. And then again, it has another effect. So now we're on to the worms. They're going to move. He is going to move the one there, and then it'll attack. And there aren't any other worms in his room, so that's he's not going to get any bonuses. But it's five on her. She has two for a total of four, so he is beating her, so it's going to give her two. She will move one over to negate that, so it'll only be one virus on her. And then he's going to move this up by one, so that'll trigger that. And that's the active player, so another one drops in her, his space. And then over to our other player to handle stuff, we have the Echo. So it can move up to two, and it's going to increase the risks or the threat by two of that player. And then it's going to move two more. So this will drop one in her space. Okay. So that finishes that off. And we're back to the player's turns. So again, at this point, I'm going to take a couple more turns off camera. And then we'll be back to finish off the game, I think. All right. So we're back. Our players are pretty rough here. The one player got booted. And our other player is surrounded by worms. She has gotten worm infested. All right, so it is going to be her turn to start us off. And I mean, at this point, I think she just needs to try to attack some of these enemies. First off, she's going to go ahead and do a uh, upgrade. So that lets her draw two cards. I'm going to go ahead and place that there and remove that right away to eliminate a virus. And then let's see what I get here. So I have misdirection and buzz. It's so misdirection. You entered a room. Uh, if you have entered two different rooms, place an infection on one of these rooms. Okay. So that's not too bad. Uh, it's not necessarily going to help me right now, but maybe in the future if I last that long. All right. So let's go ahead and start off. Now that I have three clicks, I'm going to go ahead and do an attack onto... Let's see, I have two, four, six, seven. So I'm going to go ahead and target her. That's not double, but it's going to at least do two viruses to her. So I'm going to do that. And that'll move one. And then I'll go ahead and attack her again. And that will eliminate her at least. And get her out of there. And that gives me a reward token. All right. That was my three actions. So I do have to shift another one of these up. And then I'm going to go ahead and move a defense over and a yellow over as my configure. That's all I can do for my turn. So it's going to be over to my other player to go. That player has three clicks, almost four. I'm going to go ahead and enter into this room here as it's the only gate that's left. Our uh, guardian has been doing an excellent job of breaking those down. So at this point, I have the purple or the blue and green I need a yellow and I also need another half of a blue so I'm going to go ahead and have three clicks so I think I'm going to do a uh, configure real quick 
Or no, maybe it's maybe I should do an upgrade. I'm going to do an upgrade instead. So I'm going to do it. Go ahead and do that. That gets me two cards. So that's going to get me. I gain control of the central node. Uh, you may immediately gain two clicks. All right, and then I also have assign one additional virus. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spend that to do a move action. So that'll move me up here. So I've still only spent one action. I have two actions remaining. And I'm going to go ahead and do a move action itself to move in. So I got four points of movement. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get one of these. So it gets me another card. Yeah, I'll go ahead and spend it. So now I have to shuffle up these. Let's see what I get. Let's see if I can get something that will help me. And I think I'll use this as well to push that. Eh, no, no, not yet. All right, let's go ahead and take that one. So that gets me plus two to my attack. All right, um, at this point, I have a shot at pot potentially getting another piece of information. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack my the other character there and we'll see what we can do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Vigor and I think I'm going to start with that. My attack is 2, 4, 6, 8, plus the 2 for 10. Now, my other player's defense is 4 right now, so it is going to double it, which would do 3 to her. She is going to play Buzz, which is going to cancel the effects of this one. But because she played a card, it goes back to my other player to play another card or play cards if he wants to. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one that lets me assign an additional virus. So I'm still at eight to four. So it's going to, well, yeah, I wanna do that. So at this point she could shift one down, but she's still going to take two viruses from me which is going to boot her from the system. And because of that, I get to steal information. That doesn't mean I get to take the information from her, but I can copy any information that she has. So I am going to copy that one yellow and gain that. And then her stuff is going to be removed and she is going to be booted from the system. These will be returned to me. All right. Uh, and then I did have, that was my third click, but I do have another one now that I gained that information. So I get one more and I still need uh, the other uh, blue. I need the other blue, which is down here. So that's not going to help me too much. So I could do an upgrade and I do have to move one of these down. So I could do an upgrade. Give me a free movement. Might not be a bad idea. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and do this. That may, has me push red, and then I gain a yellow. Gives me a, a little bit more movement points. I'm going to go ahead and place that there. And I'll go ahead and spend that right away to move here. All right, uh, that is it for that. So then I go into my configurations. Um, I'm going to go ahead and push two up for my first one. I'll push them over for my second. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and do another one here. So I'm going to do the yellow there and a yellow there for my three. All right, um, that is the end of my turn. Then we move into password. So this is gonna pass over to my player or the other player. And then the firewall phase, we have to resolve cards. So first off, that player there has the this guy. So it's gonna to move to spaces, boom, boom, and eliminate that. And that is game. Oh man, so close. 
Well, that is it. Man, that was a close fought battle. Sturm almost was able to come out on top with that one, but Ice is no joke. They locked this place down. The Guardian was able to move around and eliminate those gates, kicking those players out and winning the game for the board. So I hope you found the video helpful. Like I said before, this one is on late pledge. So if this is still something you were on the fence about, this is one that you still have an opportunity to get for a little while yet. I'll have a link down in the description. So if you want to check that out and find out if this is one for you. One of the things that I am really interested in with this, as you, you know that watch my channel, I'm not a huge one for competitive games, but there is a uh, expansion for this one that adds a fully cooperative mode, which I'm really interested in. It has a massive enemy that you're all working together to defeat. So I'm definitely very interested in checking that out. And I'll probably have some more coverage of that once I get my copy of the game as this gets through production. So let me know what your thoughts are on this one as well. Is this one that you backed? Why or why not? Or is this something that you are considering backing at this point? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to start a conversation with you. And until next time, I'll see you later.